What's up, insiders? Deuces Jack at Vaping Insider. Today we're going to be going over a single 18650 pod mod. I don't know what you want to call it. This thing is super versatile. Wait when you see all the stuff that it comes with. Before we get into the video, click the link down below in the top comment in order to join our Facebook group. I got the limited edition, baby. Let's check this thing out. It opens up like this. Look at that presentation, man. Nice job on that, right? Beautiful, beautiful presentation. Now, you got this little plastic piece right here. Just pop that out of there like that. And check that out, man. Look at the way they laid that out. Good on you, Oxva. Nice job. Now, let me go over while it's in here and labeled. Let me go over everything that's in the kit. We're going to start on top, okay? Here's your Origin X right here, all right? 0.2 unicoil. You get an airflow ring. You get a 0.3 ohm unicoil. You get a 0.5 ohm unicoil. You get a 1 ohm unicoil. You get this RDTA drip tip and cap. You get your original Origin X pod that takes all these coils, okay? You get a 510 thread adapter. Here is your RDTA deck. So you also get this accessories box that we're going to go over. And you get this Unicoil RBA deck that I'm going to go over. I'm not going to throw a build in it because it's very, very simple. But I will go over it with you, all right? First of all, let's start off with all the coils. This is the 0.2 ohm Unicoil, good for 55 to 60 watts. You can see the mesh in there. Notice on this one, this one does not go into the airflow control ring. This one just slides right in right by itself. As opposed to the other three, right? Like here is the 0.5 ohm one, good for 20 to 25 watts. And you can see there's threading on it. And the reason there's threading on it is because it threads right into the airflow control ring right there. And now you can adjust your airflow. See that? It's got stoppers on both ends, okay? This coil again, another mesh coil. Then the next coil in the kit is the 1 ohm coil, good for 10 to 15 watts. All right, get a good look at it there, okay? This is the smallest one, the lowest wattage one in the kit. And then the next coil is the 0.3 ohm, good for 30 to 40 watts. Again, another mesh coil. And this one screws into the base as well. Next is your RBA base. You can see it has a 510 connection, gold plated, insulator ring around it, stainless steel threading there. We've seen these RBA bases before. Very, very simple. All right, simple, simple, mouth to lung. You know, maybe you can get a simple Clapton in there. I would go with a round wire build, okay? When you, when you wick it, you want to use the dam method. Um, I'm not going to build it because it's just so simple. It's easy, easy enough for most people to build. To be honest, which I hate working with decks like this because they're just too tiny, but you can get a really decent vape off of it. I have used it already. Now, here's an important thing to remember. After you build the RBA section, take the 510 part off, okay? And in order to use this in the regular tank, you got to put the airflow control ring on, right? Once you do that, you adjust your airflow for whatever vape you want. And now you take your regular tank and you got to line it up the same way I showed you and just pop it in. And now you're ready to rock your RBA section. All right. Kind of cool. So let me show you what I'm talking about. When you put the big coil in there, the 0.2 ohm coil, all right, you want to make sure when you pop it in, your airflow is facing that way. Okay just like that. Hard to see on camera, but I don't know if you can see it. You see that little square piece right there, right where my finger is, right there, okay? You want to make sure you line up that square piece with this little plastic piece here, and then you just pop it in. And that it won't let you put the coil in any other way, okay? As opposed to when you put the coils in with the airflow control ring, you're also going to see a flat piece right there that's tough to see. You got to line that up as well otherwise it's not going to go in so you got to kind of 
finagle it a little bit. While we got the tank on top, let's take a look at it, all right? Fixed drip tip, okay? 510 bore style drip tip. Got a little bit of texture here, so when you grab it, you can pull it out of the pod. Some light Oxfa branding here. Definitely clear enough for me to see my juice level. I like that a lot, all right? Here's your fill port right here. See that little nipple? We got some nipple action going on, baby. Hashtag we love nipples. Little uh, little bit of grip there so you can pull it up. There's your fill port right there, okay? You can fill it up. I haven't had a problem displacing air. Everything on it's been fine. Once you're done, you just kind of take your finger and pop that right in there. There is your magnet, okay? Let me show you how this thing goes in. Nice, strong magnets. You just pop it in right like that, all right? And now when you want to see your juice level, you can just hold the mod and you can see your juice level right through the top. Nice job on that. I don't know if I like that better or if I would have rather have seen a top fill here. I think they had enough room to do a top fill. I think I would have liked that. Now let me, let me show you how the 510 works. Just pop it in just like that. Nice and clicky, man. It don't move. All right, now... On top here, we got some stainless steel threading. We got a gold-plated 510. It don't even feel spring-loaded. It really don't even move. But it's gold-plated, and now you can run a tank on it. I've been running this on it. I've been running the Aromamizer light on it, the black one. I think it looks pretty badass on there. I really do. I think that looks really, really nice on there. So if you got a black Aromamizer light, you might want to check this little single 18650 mod out with the 510 adapter. You also get a ton of accessories. Here is your Aglet cotton and two 2.5 millimeter coils. All right, they got the specs on them right there. They look like decent coils, but because of the wattage limitations on this, I'm going to run one single coil, a lower ohm coil, when I build it for you in this video. You get these spare O-rings and spare deck screws. You also get this NI80.6 ohm coil, all right? This is a spaced round wire build for your mouth-to-lung option. You can run this in the RBA base. And, of course, you get the obligatory spare screws, spare O-rings, and blue screwdriver. You also get a Type-C charging cable. All right, this thing does have Type-C charging as well. Here is the RDTA base, all right? Kind of neat, man. You can run a single or dual coil in here, postless deck. Those, where, those are where your wicks go, right there, all right? Kind of nice. Here are your post screws right here. You can see them opening up and closing. 1.5 millimeter hex keys are what's on that deck. And you can see what they did. They did something kind of interesting. They kind of just ran a connection between the deck down the here okay this is the part that's going to fire your coil once the current moves through there and into the deck nice job on that same type of tank a little bit of texture here this is kind of cool your fill port is on top i like that there's your fill port right there all right once you're done filling you just pop it shut like that um again a little bit of subtle oxva branding you got a magnet right there okay and when you get this thing all built it just pops in like that and then you have this RDTA cap all right it does have an 810 drip tip on it so that's really nice I like that all right you just pop it in and out like that airflow is fully adjustable but here's something interesting see those little teeth on the bottom that's kind of like their locking barrel system and now you can see see those little teeth right there they're gonna those little grooves are gonna pop into each other like that and now it's locked down, and now you can adjust the airflow. It goes all the way around, no stoppers, but it does have a nice tension to it, all right? And that's what that looks like all put together. All right, finally, let's get to the mod itself. Check that out, a little bit of Oxva branding, a little bit of carbon fiber there, kind of digging it. You got a little open tab right there for your fingernail pop it open just like that and now you can notice right in the original ox for origin right you could slide the pod out from here right this one is different because you got a little fingernail tab here and you just pop it out from the top 
So that's kind of cool. Definitely digging that. Got a battery strap here. Black on black battery markings. That's a bad job. Nice, strong magnets that coincide with magnets on the battery door. Battery door is, it's plasticky, but it's nice and firm. The carbon fiber actually looks really nice. There's no texture. It's nice and smooth, though, okay? Here you have a gold-plated spring-loaded battery contact. On the bottom, you got a gold-plated button-style battery contact, all right? Now, when you put your batteries in here, they go in negative side up, right? Push it in first, pop it on, and now you see the button light up and you see the screen come on, all right? Once you're done with all that, you heard that? Nice, right? Check it out again. You heard that? Nice, right? And this door is pretty solid. It's got a little jiggle here and there, but it doesn't. It moves a little bit side to side, but it don't move up and down. Honestly, you don't feel it while you're using it. I have the utmost confidence in it that it'll stay on during use, okay? Now, let's go over the front side of the mod. You got your airflow right there. That's where you're getting your airflow from. You got this little recessed ball bearing type of fire button, right? Ah, I didn't like it on the original. I kind of feel like when I fire it, I can't fire it with the point of my thumb. I kind of got to like get the edge of my finger in there, and it's kind of annoying. I'm not sure I really like that button at all, okay? Now, here is your up button. And why I say up button is because it only goes up, right? It goes all the way up to 60 watts, and then it round robins, okay? So, and it scrolls pretty fast, and it'll tell you when it hits maximum power, all right? So not bad on that. It's no big deal that it's just got an up button. I know some people that's going to annoy. Now, there you got your wattage, your voltage, your resistance, your puffs, and your battery meter right there, okay? Very simple, very cleanly laid out. Now, you hit the plus and fire button together, and you can clear your puffs if you want to, okay? Three clicks locks the mod. That means you can't fire it. You can't put the wattage up or down. Three more clicks unlocks the mod. That's it, folks. That's the whole menu system in a nutshell, baby. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is this. This does have an intelligent chip system where it's limiting your wattage. So when we do the build on the RDTA, I'm going to build around 0 0.13, 0 0.14 because I want to be able to put some wattage through the coil. There is no DIY mode, and there should be a DIY mode. Because while I do like the intelligent part of the chipset and the fact that it stops me from burning out my sub-ohm coils, when I'm running the RDTA, I want to be able to turn that off. And you can't do that on this. So let's build this RDTA. I'm not going to use the coils uh, that came in the box because I don't think I'm going to get a saturated hot vape on a dual coil build with a single battery. So I'm gonna use a single coil, Vapor Road coil. Go check him out on Facebook, all right? This is a 0.14 Clapton. Check that bad boy out, right? That's gonna run good on this, I think. Now, I would suggest if you have a coil cutting tool, use the five spot for this postless deck, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna slap your coil in there, and they're already, they're already pretty close, okay? But you wanna get your wire cutter in there, just give them a snip. Make sure they're nice and even. Okay? And five should do you good on this one. Now you want to take your RDTA. You want to take your coil. You want to pop it in there just like so. All right? Now what I suggest is you lightly put your finger on there. Make sure the mod is off. You want to burn your finger. And you tighten down your leads. Okay? Turn it around. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And there you go, baby. Easy peasy, right? Now you get your coiling rod in there. I might want to, you know, push it around a little bit. And that's it. That's how you want to build it. Now what we're going to do is five clicks. We're going to turn the mod on. We're going to adjust the power. Ah, 32 looks just about right on that, all right? 
We're going to give it a dry burn, give it a little scrape, make sure we got no hot spots, gently. And you can see we're glowing evenly from the inside out. Cotton we're going to be using today. The best cotton I've ever tried. This is Cloud9 Cotton. Go check this cotton out. It has no breaking whatsoever. Now we're going to take our burned in coil, right? And now we're going to take our cotton, our Cloud9 cotton. We're going to make it nice and pointy on one end. And we're going to pop it right through there. Just like that. Now, here's the thing that's important where you want to cut this, okay? You kind of want to cut it right below this ridge here. You see that ridge? See that little ridge right there? Kind of want to like line it up with that ridge. So you kind of want to run your scissors right across that tank part and just give it a snip right there, okay? Same thing, use that ridge kind of as your, as your guide because you want to wick this just like you would a regular RDTA, all right? And if it looks a little long on one side, you can pull it through a little bit, all right? And then what you do is you take your nice pointy vape shears and you just get that cotton in there. Just stuff it down, baby. See how nice and loose that is? That's how you want it, okay? Just like that. Repeat the process on the other side. Just take it, pop it in there, and now you're good to go. All right? Nice and easy. See how nice and loose? That's how you want it. And now, if you look, see how you see the cotton hanging in there? All right? That one may be a little too long, but it's no big deal. That's ideally how you want it to be on that one right there, okay? Juice we're going to be using today is Johnny's Juice Strawberry Custard. Once you're done getting those wicks in place, you can give it a little juice, all right, just to get it started. And then you pop that fill cap right there, right on the side there. Put your juice nozzle in there and just give it a nice squeeze. Now you pop your rubber gasket back in place. Now you take your top cap and just kind of notch it into place. And now your RDTA section is ready to vape. All right, and just to let you know, I showed you the limited edition kit. You absolutely can buy just the kit with the replacement coils separately, the RDTA separately, and the 510 adapter separately. Just in case you've seen something in the kit that you know you'll never use, you might want to just buy the mod and say you just want to have the 510. Buy the 510 with it. So you don't have to buy the whole kit if you don't want to. However, great job by Oxva for offering one of the most complete kits I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so here's one last look at it. This is running the sub-ohm coils. This is the marbleized one they sent me. And here it is in its full glory with the RDTA part installed. Let's go over those cons and pros. I know, went over a lot of stuff already. This was a long video because there was a lot of stuff included in the kit. So bear with me on the cons and pros. First con is going to be, while I like the fact that it has a smart chip, there's no way to shut that feature off. There's no DIY mode. So when I run my RDTA or RBA base, I'm limited to the parameters of the chipset. There should be a DIY mode. It's crazy, man. I just don't know why they didn't think of that. It's a definite con. Black on black battery markings, that's a con. The battery door. The battery door is pretty solid. It doesn't move while you're using it, but if you rub your thumb against it, you can get it to move a little bit. I would have rather seen it not move at all. It's a minor con. Fixed drip tip on the pod part for the sub-ohm tanks. I would have rather seen a 510. Again, another very small con, but I gotta point it out. It is a 510 type of bore, but I would have rather been able to run my own. No down button. That's gonna bother some people. It didn't bother me on this device, but I gotta point it out for the peeps it may bother. Another con's gonna be 
while it does have type c charging the charge port is on the bottom i don't like that i don't like laying down my mod when i have to charge it even though we recommend it's an external battery device you should charge it externally there are those times in a pinch where i might want to top off say i got my rdta on there i don't want to lay it down on the side it may leak right so that's a con and the last con is going to be that fire button mm. it's like a ball bearing that's like recessed sometimes i have a really hard time finding it and most of the times i don't press it with my thumb i almost press it with like the edge of my finger like the like the side of it it's just a very weird fire button. I wish it was more pronounced. I wish it protruded more instead of being sunken in the way it is. But that's it on the cons. Yeah, it had quite a few, but most of them were very nitpicky stuff. I tried to explain them as best as I could. Let's move on to the pros. First pro is going to be, this thing is extremely versatile. It's got something for everyone, right? You can DL hit it. You can mouth to lung hit it. You can run sub-ohm coils in it. You can run an RBA base in it. You can run an RDTA base in it. With the 510 adapter, you can run a tank on it if you want to. I mean, it's super, super versatile. By the way, don't know if I mentioned it in the down low, but 22 millimeters is going to be about it as far as overhang goes with the 510 adapter. Staying along the same lines, it's a super complete kit. If you get this limited edition kit, it is very, very complete. I like that. It's a huge, huge pro. Now, if you think you don't need all that stuff, you can buy it separately too. It's, let's say you just want to buy the mod, you want the sub-ohm tank pod, right? And you want the 510 connector. You can buy them separately as well. So I like when vapors have choices. It's all good. It's all a pro. Great form factor. Feels great in the hand, nice and slim, very pocketable, easy to carry, just a joy to use. I really, really like this device as far as the form factor goes. It's got a nice capacity. It scrolls fast. Easy menu system. Type-C 2-amp charging. The chipset is smart, and that's great for people who only want to vape on the factory coils because it's going to prevent you from accidentally burning out your coil. So even though I gave them a con for not having a DIY mode, I got to give them a pro for making the chipset smart. I love the fact that Oxfa released this kit with all the accessories. I hate when companies release a kit like this and they're like, oh, the RGTA will be out in a month. The 510 adapter will be out in a month. That's bullshit. Oxfa did it right. They deserve credit for it. Big, big pro. And the last pro is going to be, I'm getting great flavor off this thing no matter what mode I run it in. Here is the big boy coil at 60 watts. I'm getting great flavor and clouds. Check it out. Not bad, right? At 60 watts. Here's the coil you saw me build on the RDTA at 60 watts. Check it out. Again, nothing wrong with that at all. Getting great flavor the way both of these are set up. Just an awesome, awesome job by Oxva. Let's move on to that five-star rating system. First category is going to be the looks. I think it's smart looking. I think it's sexy. I think it's classy. I love the carbon fiber one. The marble one is nice as well. In the looks category, I'm giving it four and a half stars because I think it's a beauty. Next category is the form factor. How could you not like this form factor? It's comfortable in the hand. It feels great. It's an easy, easy carry. It's barely bigger than a single 18650 battery. They did a bang up job on the form factor. In the form factor category, they're getting another four and a half stars. In the performance category, this thing really does perform well in all modes. It lost a half a point because it doesn't have a DIY section in the menu system. Had they done that, I would have gave it four and a half stars. It's not a deal breaker that they don't have it. You just got to watch where you build in order to get the maximum wattage out of it. And then if you do build low, you're going to have to deal with a cool vape as well because of the limitations on the chipset. So for that reason, I gave it four stars in the performance categories. 
As far as the value goes, I've been seeing this thing for just shy under 50 bucks, right? I've been seeing it all over the internet. I think it's a good value. If you get this limited edition kit for like 45 to $50, I think for the stuff that you get, this is a seriously complete kit that has something for everybody. I think it's a really good value at that price point. I'm giving it another four and a half stars. We're going to add all these stars up. We're going to come up with a star count of 17 and a half stars. That's huge, man. Unbelievable total star count. Now we're going to take these 17 and a half stars. We're going to divide them by four, and we're going to come up with an average star score of 4.375. This is one of the highest ratings I've ever given to a device like this, a pod mod device like this. It's simply awesome. If this is something you think you'd like, definitely go check it out. It is 100% deuces jack approved. Let's get into some of the specs on the Oxva Origin X Limited Edition Kit. It is a single 18650 mod with a 60 watt maximum output. You can run it in factory coil mode, RBA mode, RDTA mode, or put the 510 on and run your tanks. In the kit, you get a 0.3 ohm mesh coil, good for 30 to 40 watts, a 0.5 ohm mesh coil, good for 20 to 25 watts, a 1 ohm Cantor wire coil, good for 10 to 15 watts, a 0.2 ohm mesh coil, good for 55 to 60 watts. You also get an RBA head as well as an RDTA tank. The Origin X Limited Edition is available in black carbon, black red, stabilized wood, and marble. Don't forget, insiders, save the date, September 5th at the Ellipse in DC. We got a rally for our right to vape. Make sure you go over the United Vapors Alliance and check them out for all the details. And don't forget to head on over to the Vaping Insider community on Facebook. Fastest growing vape group on Facebook. We just hit 12,000 members. The feed flies. It's newbie friendly. I'm there all the time. I'd love to see you there as well. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You. Keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.